Hello and welcome to Destiny, the open door. I am your host, Tammy Dennis, and I am coming to you today with our online daily inspiration and journey into the presence on today Friday we honor Ascended Master Sarabas Bay who is the Chohan of the fourth ray of God's purity of the alignment of the four lower bodies and the ascension Serapis Bay is overlighted in the area of Luxor, Egypt, an etheric retreat. And Archangel Gabriel and Lady Hope has an etheric retreat over Sacramento and Mount Shasta, California, United States of America. An Elohim Purity and Lady Compliment Astria, who hails over the southeast arm of the White Sea in Russia. And they are all waiting for your calls to them today. They exemplify the color and vibration of white, crystal white. Our Ascended Master Sarabas Bay imparts upon us all the following. Beloved Sarabas Bay told us some time ago that the ascension flame was so practical that it could actually tune a piano or tune up a motor. The ascension flame could render you many practical services in the restoration of those so-called inanimate objects which you have around you in your home individually. The challenge is up to you to invoke that ascension flame to blaze up constantly through your homes, through your body temples, and see what it will do for the substance and actual appearance of your present furnishings. See what it will do for you if you will allow it to do so by your feelings of acceptance of its power, that ascension flame will be able to transmute the disharmonies which often arise in family life, in your professional life. So allow for it to just be that beacon of light to clear all that debris, that substance that negativity away. So let us get started now with part two of understanding the Lords of Karma. We do wish to thank you in advance for listening always to our beloved destiny, the open door.
Part 2 Introduction The Karmic Council Process The meeting of the two thousand life streams were called by the Lords of Karma, after which they examined their entire record of individual life streams whose outcome would depend on the next actions of the Karmic Council in which had been blessed by the great central sun messenger for the first dispensation. The life streams were called upon to report individually in their etheric body and spoke before the entire assemblage in the presence of their sponsors. Beloved Maha Chohan expressed that these life streams were the first incarnate members of humanity to stand in the hall of judgment before the time of so-called death. Each one were divided by their individual endeavors and they appeared in that order and were grouped according to what country they belonged to, what they have done, their potential activities, and what they allowed to slide by. The Maha Chohan was uncertain about the next activity in which the karmic board's initial results are determined by the initial experiment. During this time, certain members chose not to avail themselves of the dispensation in which their own Christ self made application. And in so doing, the need was great to determine the usefulness and ultimate victorious accomplishment. The sponsors by far are genuinely pleased with the results by which everyone's feelings were mutual with respect to the Lords of Karma, having an encouraging effect with the thought of granting the higher selves of the people to seize the energies and powers of the personality and so fulfill in its own purpose, in its own design. The Maha Chohan states that no matter how great the struggle and resistance of the outer self may be. When the higher mental body has been given this opportunity and authority by the lords of karma, there is no possibility of lasting rebellion on the part of the individual. Although for a time there may seem to be a terrific struggle. The Christ self has not chosen idly to sustain an ego for millions of years, and when it is authorized by the Son of the system to set aside the human free will, of the individual, that authority 
will never again be relinquished. And sad it is that it was relinquished in the first place. During this time, everyone was gathered at the retreat in the etheric and physical bodies while the karmic board is making their determinations about the life stream's higher mental body initial request outcome. According to Dr. J. Winters, author of the complete book of Enoch, it is written, The words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous, who will be living in the days of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And Enoch, a righteous man, whose eyes were opened by God, took up his parable and said, I saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angels showed me, and from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is for to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them. The Holy Great One will come forth from his dwelling, and the eternal God will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sinai, and will appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens, and all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake, and great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth, and the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. And the earth shall be wholly rent and sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish. And there shall be a judgment upon all. But with the righteous he will make peace and will protect the elect and mercy shall be upon them and they shall all belong to God and they shall be prospered and they shall all be blessed and he will help them all and light shall appear unto them. And he will make peace with them. And behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners 
have spoken against him. For this is the judgment which has come from above and which has judged every human being upon the planet. It is a decision. It is a ruling, a finding, a verdict, a sentence, and a conclusion that results in a decree that is issued, which lets us know that all that is and all that was and all that is now and all that will be until judgment day. The judgment. Before judgment is handed down, any member of the Great White Brotherhood may speak for such a soul and offer to take responsibility for that one. When this is done, the soul is able to enter a higher sphere for instruction. Then, he had earned by merit. When a brother does speak for such a soul, it is taken to the proper schoolroom where it will learn the lessons it needs most to assist its evolution and progress. Judgment is never given with a sense of punishment. Never. But is always done to give the soul the greatest possible assistance to develop the latent light within the heart. The Maha Chohan faithfulness to the planet and all humanity is encouraging. This genuine truth is poured forth from every sphere. He fosters these same truths in the law of the circle. He states that this is a world of cause and its ultimate effect. It acts under the natural law of the circle called the Cosmic Law. If it were not for the initiative, interest, and personal sacrifice of intelligent beings who have made mankind's welfare their business, the Karmic Law would act with full force and there would be no possibility of transcending its effects, or softening its slash. The dispensing of the karma to individuals, nations, and planets itself is under the direction of the lords of karma. They are embodied justice, but also mercy and love. It is part of the heritage of every life stream, ascended and unascended, to use the authority of his own life and call for the transmutation of evil, mitigation of karmic retribution, and the creation of new causative centers which will yield good to the whole human race. Your prayers to the individuals who have transitioned. This is where the prayers for the dead can be of such tremendous assistance for loved ones. Because when you draw the attention of an ascended master 
toward that soul about to enter the halls of judgment. The master will always either go in person and offer to sponsor the soul, or he will send a representative in his place to sponsor it and conduct it to the proper sphere where the Ascended Master will visit and assist in its evolution. When you are utilizing your decrees, the decrees surrounding judgment, the decrees surrounding love, purification, and peace for the individuals who have passed on will be a good decree for the departed ones. When you concentrate and focus on your day-to-day -day activities, what are you able to see? Are you in a place where you want to be? Or are there things hindering you that you may need to work on? What are you sowing? into your world that will make you reap your harvest that will make you reap an unfortunate outcome God knows your heart for God knows all and God sees all and therefore God cannot be mocked let us examine that now. In the King James Version of the Bible, for some of the chapters and verses, it states, Psalms 126, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 states For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 states, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Proverbs 22, verse 8 states, He that soweth Iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 states, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It should be stressed that the karmic board never punishes any life stream or individual. Any suffering that is experienced is the recoil of the distress that he caused another individual or life stream. And he must reap that which he sowed. The soul thus learns to use his life in constructive activities. 
if mankind could only realize God is a God of love and everything is always done to make him happy and comfortable. Even in the transmuting of his mistakes, he could relax in God's great love and hasten his progress tremendously. The Ascended Master Kuthumi, or a representative or pupil of his, claims almost all those who pass from the body in youth so as to give them every assistance. The Ascended Master El Moria sponsors those who have been active in governmental affairs, even if they seemingly failed in their tasks. The Ascended Master Paul the Venetian asked to assist those who have worked in endeavoring to bring and sustain peace, and brotherhood. The Ascended Master Sarabas Bay speaks for the artists, musicians, architects, engineers, and builders of beautiful temples, cathedrals, and cities. The Ascended Master Hilarion speaks for the doctors, scientists, nurses, and agnostics. The Ascended Master Jesus speaks for those who have served him well in the Orthodox channels. The Ascended Master Saint Germain asks for the particular life streams who consciously or unconsciously have forwarded the cause of freedom, whether from political, religious, or mental and physical bondage. Therefore, it is well for each individual to have at least a passing acquaintance with these beloved brothers, so that when you stand before the karmic board, as every individual must do, every life stream must do, one of these beloved brothers may say, this child has served us well. And thus, he may become your sponsor. Many times, the life stream individuals of those who have been benefited by the soul and earth life are called in to testify for them. And even members of the four-footed kingdom, the animal kingdom, bear witness to kindness given them. All this is taken into account. It is seldom that a soul arrives before the karmic board who does not have at least one life stream that has benefited in some way by reason of its embodiment on earth. This paragraph is interesting because to me, upon passing this earthly life and meeting the unexpected or the unknown, I hasten to know what the final outcome will be for me. And all that the Brotherhood of the Light, the Chohans, the Ascended Masters have taught us, my greatest lesson on this earth thus far is Lord Lanto's message for humanity, and that is to reverence all life. Lord Lanto's message for humanity is that he wants us to reverence all life, to love life as though it were my own life, to love, 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 and allow for life to love you back, to love me back. Especially the nature and animal kingdoms. I have lessons in all of that in which I am trying my best to make right while here 
on this blessed planet. The scales upon which such requests are measured must be evenly balanced. On one side, the potential good which such a proposed measure will affect in the evolution of the soul, of the race, or of the planet is weighed. And on the other side, exactly how much energy the sponsor can offer to the karmic board as evidence of the voluntary support of his cause by both ascended and unascended beings. After the soul is spiritually evaluated and his light measured, it is taken to one of the seven inner spheres and under the direction of beings, particularly prepared to teach him. He enfolds an understanding. This goes on for some time until his guardian signifies to the karmic board that the soul is again ready for an opportunity to re-embody on this planet. The guardians of the race and those highly evolved souls are usually willing to forego much time in the higher spheres in order to hurry back to help the race. So they appear with those who are to re-embody. This many times accounts for the lack of physical energy in this embodiment of such souls since they have foregone the period of rest which recharges the inner bodies much as a good night's sleep rest the individual on earth. The exact procedure followed by an individual, a master, or a group of dedicated beings who are to apply to the lords of karma for dispensations of mercy must realize a lot goes into the decision to make such a passage possible due to the amount of the undertaking the life stream individuals has already fulfilled. The Expiation of Mistakes The fear which most people feel in regard to the karmic board the halls of judgment is builded primarily by the fact that so very few actually live up to their light. So very few actually live up to their light. To what they had the ability to do and their remorse is their own judgment. When an individual stands in the freedom of the soul, the etheric body, and looks back and sees what he might have done, that feeling of remorse of what he could have done while he had the opportunity and the means and while he was in proximity to certain individuals of spiritual merit that causes the suffering. The karmic board always assign the individual to the particular schoolroom where he can best learn the lessons he will need to expiate, to expiate those sins of commission or omission and prepare for a new earth body.
Each one is assigned to a certain amount of application to expiate, make right, make penance, their own destructively qualified energies. Each individual must look upon and dissolve the discordant thought and feeling forms he has created, sometimes created many centuries ago. This is done by the use of the merciful violet fire. The conscious student, after receiving certain directions from the karmic board, immediately sets to work at inner levels to expiate, make, make right, make penance as much of his karma as possible in his mental, emotional, and etheric bodies. He proceeds to the realm assigned and goes to work with the violet fire and renders the same service at inner levels that you have the privilege of using while yet here on the earth. It has to be done sometime. Utilize your violet flame decrees while you are still able to in life to remedy the causes, the cause, the distress of every kind of thing that causes you discord each day. Certain churches have called this experience entering purgatory. It is not a place of punishment. It is not a place of punishment, but the place where conscious expiation can be made of all the imperfections accumulated in the lower bodies. However, when the soul is ready for a new earth body, much of the karma he would have to meet here is already transmuted and he has greater opportunities here on earth. There are about 10 billion souls using the earth as a classroom, a schoolroom, if you will, who must come into embodiment from time to time, to balance their debts. But because of the tremendous accumulation of imperfect energy around them, only one-third of that number are allowed to embody at any one time. It is a great privilege to take embodiment and life should never be taken lightly, for it is not easy to secure permission to embody. And for every three souls who desire to come back, only one is chosen at that particular time, so that for each one who is in embodiment, two others were denied that privilege. Each person is very special. Each person is very unique. For that reason alone, the karmic board and all the ascended hosts felt that you at this particular time on this planet were suitable enough for this undertaking and that your spiritual dedication your spiritual passion and commitment to be about the Father's business would ultimately get done. And they hold this as a high honor, considering you won out, so to speak, to other souls who were not at this time befitting for such a task as this.
Friday's Affirmation I am the purging of every residue of the fallen one in the four quadrants of my creation. I am the purging of every residue of the fallen one in the four quadrants of my creation. I am the purging of every residue of the fallen one in the four quadrants of my creation. I am the immaculate purity of Ma Mother Mary in my consciousness here and now. I am the immaculate purity of Mother Mary and my consciousness here and now. I am the immaculate purity of Mother Mary and my consciousness here and now. I am the overcomer of all outer conditions less than the purity of the great light. I am the overcomer of all outer conditions less than the purity of the great light. I am the overcomer of all outer conditions less than the purity of the great light. And for Friday's decree, in the name of the beloved mighty, victorious presence of God, I am in me. Mighty I am presence, and holy Christ selves of all mankind, by and through the magnetic power of the sacred fire vested in me. I call to beloved Elohim purity, and mighty Estria, Archangel Gabriel, and Lady Hope, beloved Sarabas Bay, and the seraphim and cherubim of God, the entire spirit of the ascended masters and the world mother, elemental life, fire, air, water, and earth, to lock your cosmic circles and swords of blue flame in, through, and around my four lower bodies, my electronic belt, my heart chakras, my entire consciousness, being, and world. I invoke the ascension flame in my home, my job, and all of my surroundings to transmute the disharmonies which often arise in my family life, my employment, and all around me and the people I come into contact with. Cut me loose and set me free. Cut me loose and set me free. Cut me loose and set me free from all that is less than God's perfection in my own divine plan fulfilled. It is done, and so it is. In his holy name, beloved I am, beloved I am, beloved I am. We thank you for this beautiful message, part two of Understanding the Lords of Karma. This is Tammy Dennis with Destiny the Open Door, signing off. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Adonai Sebiot. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Adonai Destiny, the Open Door door. God bless you all. Namaste.
Peace be with you and upon you. Love and light to you all. Almighty I am. Almighty I am. Almighty I am. May the grace of God, may the peace of God, may the purity of God rest and abide with you always. Thank you. Amen.